I have zero brown M&Ms. Okay? I have a total of 15 candies. I'm using this formula right here. The number of candies of one color divided by the total number of candies. Okay? Everybody see that formula? is on the top of your page. Number of candies of one color divided by total number of candies times 100. Okay? That formula is on the top of your notebook page. Okay. So I have zero brown candies divided by the total number of candies that I had in my M&M bag, which was 15. Okay? Times 100 which means that I have 0% brown, right? Because it's zero. Okay. Now, under blue, I have two blue candies divided by the total number of candies. So I'm going to take my calculator and I'm going to punch in two, and then I'm going to divide by 15. Okay, and I will get a decimal, 0. 0.1333, okay? And then I'm going to multiply that by 100 to convert it to a percentage. And that gives me 13.3% blue, okay? So my data, when I went through, I had 13.3% blue candies. Who can come here and help me with the next one? Who would like to come here with the document reader and help me with the next one? Come on up. So explain to us what, what you're going to do. You're going to calculate the orange. Come on over here. Come on. Calculate the orange. So you're going to take the number of candies of one color. How many orange candies? Five. Five. Go ahead, write it down. Yellow have the same amount. Very good. 
And so if you look on the data table, yes, you're right. The blue and the yellow have the same amount. All right? So one of the reasons that we use a graph in science is because it's a very visual indicator and a, and a way for us to look quickly at our data and sort our data visually so that we can see it and make sense of it. Okay? Which takes us to today's lesson. Today's lesson when you walked in, I asked you to explain why scientists graph data. And many of you did a pretty good job on the bell work for that. Um, but we're going to go through a lesson for how to actually graph data. Okay, so we are working on page 8 and 9 of your notebook. Go ahead and open to page 8 and 9 of your notebook, please. 8 and 9 of your notebook. Okay, we're going to specifically be writing in page 9. We're going to leave page 8 blank. Yes, Dylan. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Yes, we're going, so we're going to, at the top of page 9, remember that we start every day with a question. Our question for today is, how are line, bar, and circle graphs similar, and how are they different? Okay, that's what we're going to find out today in the notes. We're going to find out how our line, bar, and circle graph similar, so how are they alike, and how are they different? I'm going to turn off the lights here so that you can see the overhead. Yes, on page 9 of your notebook. So on page 9, everyone with your red pencil, go ahead. How are line, bar, and circle graphs different, similar, and how are they different? And just to give you an overview of what this is going to look like, okay? so that you have an idea of how to plan space for your notebook. I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see the writing in just a moment, but this is how much information you need to fit on this notebook page, so write accordingly, okay? All right, so we're going to zoom in, okay? And of course, we're going to start our lesson We're going to start our lesson, as we always do, with a definition, right? So our lesson is on graphing, that's our heading, okay? And our definition is a graph. A graph is a visual display of information or data. I'll say that again. It's a visual display of information or data. After we finish these notes, we're going to get together in groups of two, our learning partners, and we're going to work on making different kinds of graphs. Okay, so we're going to learn about the different kinds of graphs right now, and then we're going to go ahead and work with a partner and actually draw some graphs from some data tables that I have. Okay, so you're going to make your own graphs. So a graph is a visual display of information or data. And the first type of graph that I have to show you today is what's called a line graph. Okay? A line graph shows trends or how data changes over time. Okay? So it shows trends in your data or how the data changes over time. And you can see down here, I have time, okay? And I have temperature here. So notice that when I make a graph, I always have each of the axes labeled and there's always a um, title for my graph, okay? We're scientists here, and scientists are exact, so we always have a title, we always label our axes, we always tell people what we're looking at. 